On today's video, we are installing the shift kit on a TH700. Hopefully you can enjoy this video. It's also a part of a series of videos. If I will say though, the end result of this B&M kit. You wait and see, it's pretty cool. Alright, I successfully accomplished not spilling it everywhere on myself. Now I need to clean the pan, it's quite, quite a bit dirty under here. You can see I have you viewing it from a different angle now. This here gasket is starting to come out. That's uh, for underneath this guy here. I'm going to at the very least pull these bolts off of here and see where that gasket is blown out from. Oh, it's actually blown out on this side too. I'll show you that. So you can see right here, it's also blown out. It's letting a lot of fluid go by. This thing probably shifts like a slosh bucket. I don't see any other areas where it's blown out. So let's get that apart. So we have the pan out and the pan, it's got a couple of little bit alarming things like this pile of metal dust or whatever that's sitting here. Let's see if there's anything sharp in there. Hopefully I don't get a sliver. So it would look like a sliver. There's a couple of small chunks in there. So it's a little bit alarming, but not overwhelming. Uh, so overall, when you take a pan out, you want to look for that, that really big crap. If you see anything large in here, that's a red flag. That means something is failing miserably in the transmission. These little pieces, a lot of times general wear and tear in transmission, there's there's parts that hit the case and there's parts that hit other parts and they, they leave little flakes from time to time that pop off and it's not necessarily detrimental to the transmission and it might still have a lot of service life left in it, but it is starting to wear out. So that's what this one's showing me signs of. It's just starting to wear out. It's not totally toast. The transmission fluid don't even smell burnt. Uh, it actually has like an old smell to it, which is interesting. So here is the magnet, if I can get it off of there. Holy crap. These things get loaded and caked. This one's full, that's why you see all the metal over there, all the stuff. But these things get really full of metallic dust. Now, the dust is absolutely normal. That is nothing whatsoever to be alarmed about because that dust is from the clutches wearing out. The frictions and steels, you know, they obviously rub against each other and they wear together. That's normal. So that dust is absolutely normal and that's why servicing your transmission is so important. A lot of cars today, they have lifetime fluid not okay don't don't lifetime fluid it's, that goes for any transmission transmission should be flushed i don't care what the manufacturer recommends or says they do it for job security these things they wear out there's there's no question whatsoever that you will wear out transmissions if you don't so with that said the next thing you'll see me doing is pulling the valve body out look at all that crap that's built up here this car only had 57,000 miles on it i believe it's 50 something 57,000 miles roughly, and look at all that material in there. That's just nasty, nasty stuff. You have to change your transmission, like transmission fluid and filter, whatever you have to do the service, whatever the service requires on all cars, all makes and models. Now, whenever you pull these valve bodies down, you want to make sure that you're as careful as possible not to tip it too far one way or the other, and that you pull it straight down. That way as you're setting it down, you can pay attention and watch the uh, check balls that are in there to make sure they don't move. I had one fallout of place. You can usually tell where they go by looking at the plate and the valve body, but sometimes it's really hard to figure out where they came from. So it's a really good idea to get a look before you start moving them around, even take a picture. Okay, so here we are. It ends up there was two check balls. There's another one sitting there that I did not see fall. Now I imagine that one fell when this thing did its drop onto the stud that I still left in but left it loose just so that I could make sure that it didn't fall on me and so I had one always holding it up. These two check balls, I'm going to take a look here, see if I can figure out where they go. Okay, here's where one of them goes, I can see that. There is a shiny spot, unevenly worn, into this plate and that's very common for transmissions to wear out goofy. If they have some kind of weird fluid flow thing, it'll wear out this plate 
in a very piss poor way. And this one is more out goopy. So I know a check ball goes there. Okay, here's where the other one goes. Now it either goes in one of these holes, but notice how this gasket goes around that section. So it's designed so that it can go between the two. So it can go from one to the other depending on the flow of the fluid. And they both have a shiny spot. So I know that this is a passage which only contains one ball, not two. Okay, so I noticed one of the check balls stayed in its position when I did that. So I'm going to keep note of that. This one right here. Now, that is off. There are even more check balls in this section as well. I already see a couple of them. There's one here and here. Uh, most likely I'm going to have to dump a lot of this fluid out to see where the rest of them are though. And very carefully tip this at about that angle and let it drain. I don't see any more, but I'm going to now take a little brake clean and fill this area in carefully to try and dilute some of this transmission fluid. That way I can do the same thing to dump it out again. Now that I did the brake clean, I don't want to tip it quite as far because it's easy for it to uh, have those balls fall out being there's diluted transmission fluid. So the transmission fluid acts kind of like grease in a sense and it will actually allow it to kind of stick to the valve body. So I don't want to tip it too far now that I'm diluting that hypothetical grease, if you will. Wiping this down extremely lightly. So I don't want this rag to tear apart and leave lint behind. So here it is. This is the shift kit. We got stage one, stage two, if you wanted to do it. Uh, it's two kits in one. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and open this box up and take a peek at the instructions. It is very critical to actually look at instructions on things like this because they actually have a lot of good information in them. I normally don't look at instructions unless it's for torque specs. But in these types of scenarios, absolutely have to look at instructions. So in the box, the most important thing it comes with is a sticker. Customer assistance. Limited warranty guide. I don't know how you could warranty a shift kit. That seems kind of stupid. Installation instructions. Shift improver kit, 1982 to 93, non-electric. So in step five, they actually go over something kind of important here. Uh, beginning mid 87 model year, which this is an 87. So I don't know what, what the production date actually is. However, the TH700s have an auxiliary valve body located where earlier models have a cover plate, C figure two. So it is equipped with the auxiliary valve body. So now this is the actual pressure control for the transmission oil pump and it's a valve, it's a thing right in here. So it's next to this mechanism for your gear selector and it's up here. There is a snap ring that I have to undo and it should push it out and I'd imagine there's going to be a pretty heavy spring in there is my guess. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out now. Okay, so I have everything but the pressure regulator valve it looks like. This here cup, so we got the pressure regulator retaining ring, which you saw me pull out, that's at the bottom here. This guy here has another little piece inside of it. I don't know, there it goes. Okay, so we got this little piece inside of there. It sits like that. And then this guy sits on top of this, and this guy here. Now, what it wants me to do, what it wants me to do is it wants to replace this spring using the blue spring from the kit. So, that guy there. Let's see. Squeezing this, it's, it's a pretty tight spring. Okay, I'm gonna try and squeeze it with equal pressure. So, this one is definitely a stiffer spring, but it's not crazy stiff compared to this one. It's just a decently amount stiffer. So we'll go ahead and put it back together with this guy. I won't even bother showing you that, but you'll go straight to the rest of the kit. Okay, so as you can see, I've moved on to the valve body now. It wants me to remove the MTV upshift valve, and what I did is I take a punch, push it through a little bit, but before you push it through all the way, you have to take something and push down on the center of that valve there, and then pull the pin out. If you don't push down and you just pull that pin out, chances are you'll have a oh shit moment where there's a spring in there that shoots it out. Next thing you know, you're losing pieces. Yep, there's a spring there. So now I'm gonna keep them all in the same order and set them aside. That's interesting. So these instructions, they're telling me to pull the spring out, just leave it out. 
Uh, I'm used to them telling me, hey, replace it with this or that, but I don't do this very often. But this one, uh, this one in particular, it's asking me to remove the spring all together. All right, so this part of the shift kit, I lost some footage on. And basically, I took the valve body apart, and I had to modify several things within the valve body. Like I said earlier in the video, follow the instructions. The instructions are key when it comes to these kits. They tell you everything you need to know, and in fact, every kit is a little bit different. Just continue and follow what you can. Make sure you look at those instructions with extreme detail. Cross your T's and dot your I's. It's very important to follow those instructions. But I had some MTV valve I had to remove uh, spring from. I had another, I had another valve I had to do. And then of course, if you're into doing a shift kit on your own, even the electronic transmissions are very similar. It's just, it's a lot of work. It takes a little bit of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of reading. So with that, we'll continue this video and keep moving here. All right, so now things are going to get a little bit tricky. There is a accumulator on this plate here. It's this guy right here. That guy bolts underneath. It's got some, it's got a piston inside here, a pin, a spring. This spring here goes on top of this. And there's also a piston above here. Another shaft similar to that, I believe. I'll have to double check. I'm pretty sure there's a shaft there. But what they want me to do is pull this side apart. And then I have to take, and they have two different versions. They have the heavy duty and the street. And I'm going to be doing the street. I have to take this blue spacer and I have to place it on the pin before the piston that's on there. So I'm going to go pull the piston out quick and bring that over here for you. Hmm, that bothers me a little bit. Pulled the piston out, but I don't see a pin anywhere. I might have dropped it in the pan. Maybe it fell in the pan overnight. I'll go look. So there's the piston. Ah, yes, it fell in. Okay, so here's the pin. It did just fall in the pan. It must have fell overnight while I was sitting there. So I need to have this guy on there. Now, the thing that gets a little bit hairy here is what they tell you to do with it. I have to take a straight edge. I always use a super scraper. I have a wide one that will go across that piston bore. Basically, if this spacer stops this from being able to clear the case, you have to file this down to make it according to, you know, fitment. So now I have to go ahead and assemble this. What I'm going to do to hold everything in while I test is a little bit of this grease again. So you can see I have the pin and that shim right there. So now I put that in there. Now it's sitting really low, but it looks like it's pretty well above the case. Now when you pull this thing out, you can take a pliers and just grab this and it, it comes out really easy. So what I'm going to do is grab my straight edge, aka super duper super scraper. I'm going to take this guy and I can go across that flat area. This area doesn't hit anything. Right there, it's not hitting anything. So I know it clears, so I'm good to go as far as that goes. But I still, I'm going to use this anyway because I see some gasket material here and there. So I'm going to run it across here because I'm going to be putting this together pretty soon. So they're eliminating the springs all together. That's interesting. Holy crap, that's going to shift hard as all hell. Yeah, remove the spring. Wow. And then remove the other spring. Holy craps. All right. Well, that's not going to be so hard then. So we need blue and red. So blue, red, this guy. Now in order to hold the check balls in place, you're supposed to use a petroleum jelly. They say grease in here, grease or petroleum jelly. Now you should not use regular grease. A lot of times the transmission fluid can't break it down. There's a special transmission grease that you're supposed to use. I have the transmission grease itself. Uh, otherwise, a good substitute is petroleum jelly, I guess. So, what they're telling you to do is put it in the valve body in the vehicle. I'm doing it here just to show you another option. Uh, you can take the grease, put it on this plate, then you can take this plate and everything, all the check balls, the whole nine yards, and put it up there. If you put it in the transmission, a lot of times you'll have trouble with getting the check balls to stick, even with the grease, because the grease won't stick to the tranny fluid very well, thus allowing the ball to all of a sudden fall out, and the next thing you know, you're you got a little metal ball bouncing around the floor, getting all filthy and stuff, and then you have to clean it. It creates drama. So I'm just doing it this way. That way I can have a little bit better luck put it in. Uh, they do show a picture of you looking up at the transmission. So to help me visualize it, rather than think about it, I just go like this and kind of just tip it like this and then take a look and compare to where it's at. And then I can kind of get an idea and know where I'm supposed to put it. 
In fact, they're telling me don't put one here. Oh, they're telling me, oh, that's weird, because I know there's a check ball here before, but they don't want me to put one there. Okay, there's one that goes for the auxiliary valve body. I can't put that one in right now. Now it's saying, do not put a check ball in this position. So over here, I'm supposed to only put it in one spot, the spot towards that valve. So right there. According to them, that's where it goes. I don't want to put one there, even though that one had a beat up spot. So I'm going to go ahead and verify these instructions a little bit better. Saying not to put some of them in, I have two left over. Do not install one there. And do not install one. So don't install one here or over here. It's one of these holes here. But it says don't install, so I'm not too worried about it. I have two left over and it says don't install those. So I assume that I'm in the correct realm here. So 92, they should have said mid 87, I assume, because this does have it. So I gotta go off of that one, and then I can make sure all these check balls are in the correct position. All right, I'm about to put the, the oil and transmission fluid in this car. You can see I have this Lucas stuff here. This is a hot rod and classic uh, 10W40. It is designed specifically for old school cars with flat tappet lifters. I'm unsure if this one has roller lifters or not. Uh, I'm not very familiar with this exact era of small block Chevy. However, uh, this car sat for a long time and the oil was really old before, so I'm gonna put this stuff in to just kind of as a, as, as a helper. Usually I use this for engine break-in type stuff, but in this scenario I'm going to use it just because the car has sat for so long. So after that, then we'll go back to normal oil changes for this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it a rip here see how good that second gear feels now that I got the new transmission mount and everything in it. Let's get out on the street and then hit it. Woo! A little second gear rubber there. Nice. Hey, this thing's kind of fun. <laughs> For being such a slow poke compared to what I'm used to, this thing's a lot of fun. Cool. Thanks for watching and uh, I hope to see you on another episode of whatever I come up with next.